Welcome! I'm sure you are curious to know about this circuit and you want to build it. So let me start to explain it first by schematic analysis. As you can see, the heart of this circuit is this MOSFET driver chip. I've selected a popular chip which is IR2104. It can drive almost any MOSFET, especially power MOSFETs, which are known to have big input capacitors. That's actually the main reason why we have to use a MOSFET driver. The IR2104 is a half-bridge driver. The half-bridge configuration can deliver more current to the load. Besides, the load is ground referenced. This is important for some applications. The capacitor C1 and C2 are used to reduce the noise. I've selected minimum 100 volt rate rated capacitors because I assumed the worst conditions. 100 volts is equal with the maximum MOSFET with train source tolerable voltage. If you are sure that your load that your load voltage is low, for example a 12 volt DC motor, then you can increase the capacitance and reduce the rated voltages. For example, uh, 25. For instance, 1000 microfarad 25 volts. There is enough space on the PCB which allows you to use a variety of capacitors, which I used here. Uh, what I used here are 100 nanofarad 250 volts and 220 microfarad 100 volts. The last remaining point from this schematic is the input pins of the MOSFET driver. I have pulled down the SD pin with a 4.7 kilo resistor. Therefore, if you apply a steady state logic level voltage to the SDD pin, you can enable the chip. Otherwise, the chip is disabled and it will not transfer the PWM signal to the MOSFETs. You can say, we can say the SD pin acts as a switch. You will inject your PWM pulse to the, uh, to the in pin. You can use a microcontroller, Arduino, Raspberry Pi, or another chip such as TL494 to build and control uh, the PWM duty cycle. I use the SAMAC6 uh, I use the Samaxis schematic symbols and PCB footprints for the two for the IR2104 driver and IR IRFP150 MOSFETs because at least I will not waste my time to design to design them from scratch which sometimes accompanies with mistakes. All Samaxis Samaxis services are free of charge. Don't forget to follow the description to get more information and see the reference links. If we briefly look at the IR21 datasheet, we can see it introduces a few nice features, such as input logic compatibility and separate chip and load supply injection capability. It means the power supply for the MOSFET driver and the load supply do not need to be identical, but both supplies are certainly ground referenced. As it is stated, the load supply voltage can reach up to 600 volts if the MOSFETs are rated similarly, of course. The above picture shows the design PCB layout. The bottom, the bottom pictures shows the assembled circuit board and it is ready for a test. This is just a fast semi-homemade PCB board to test the circuit and to make sure about its true operation. But you should choose a professional PCB fabrication company because now you are sure the circuit works flawlessly. I suggest you PCB way. As it is clear, I have excluded some tracks to not to be covered by solder mask. The reason is that these tracks might carry a high amount of current, but the PCB track itself cannot tolerate such current flaws at and uh, will burn out. Therefore, you must solder a bare solid copper wire on these uncovered areas to enhance the track's current and transmission capability. For my initial test, it wasn't necessary because my selected load consumed less than 3 amps. 
If you want to use the circuit for high current loads, never forget to mount the MOSFETs on a proper heatsink and please make the isolation between each MOSFET and the heatsink using, using a silicon insulation pad. These pads block the electricity but transfer the heat to the heatsink flawlessly. So now it's the time to show you the operation of the circuit. This is our assembled PCB board and these are the power and the DC motor connection. As a DC motor I have used this windscreen wiper motor and this wires go to the power supply which provides around 12 volts for the motor and the motor draws around 470 milliamps. I have connected the oscilloscope probe to the DC motor wires and if we check the signal, we can see a PDWM cycle here, which is around 25% of the duty uh, of the duty cycle, and the amplitude should be 12, which is true because our power supply provides around 12 volts. Uh, to make a PWM, I have used uh, this signal function generator, and I adjust the frequency for 5 kHz, and the amplitude is five volts. So, uh, if I increase the duty cycle of the PWM, of course the current draw and the speed of the motor should increase, isn't it? So let's check. You see that? Now it's around, goes to be one amp. Okay. Actually, because this DC motor has not, uh, does not, has not fixed on something, it does not, it makes vibration and noise. That's enough for a test. So, you see that? The current increase. Now it's around 2 amps. Two and 7. Okay, at the maximum this motor draws around 2.7 amps. Oh, let's see if our MOSFET gets warm or not. So, nothing. Actually, this current for this power MOSFET is nothing, actually. <laughs> but the, as, I, as I told you, it's enough for a test. So, it's making noise and vibration. Next, we decrease it. Yes. And come back. Let's say 1 amp. And of course the duty cycle is 50, for the 50% it draws around 1 on 1 or something. So I think this is enough to test our circuit and I hope you enjoy it. Don't forget to share, like and subscribe. Catch you next time.